Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Visio. In this module, I want to show you how to create a garden plan. So this is the stencil I've chosen and you can see on the screen there, I have a plan uh, with some decking, a summer house, some grass, a lawn, a path and the kitchen of a house. So I want to recreate this from scratch. I'm just gonna create a new page. So the stencil, if I go back, in fact, I'll start from scratch. I'll go back, file, new, and you've got all these different stencils. And if I go into categories, you can see the categories with the different um, stencils inside. So the one I've used is the home plan, and it's there because I've just been doing it. So I'll just click on that and create a new one. So the, the stencils you get are furniture, garden accessories, and walls and structure. So I'm going to start off with the garden accessories and let's um, create a path. So I've got a concrete path. Now that's quite small when you bring that onto the screen. If I go to the view tab and select task panes, gives you the option to activate these. So shape data is already on. I've just knocked it off. So I'll keep it on shape data. And then this one I want to see is size and position. So the size of this, and the width of this. If I zoom in a little bit and then just come back across, maybe a little bit more, you can adjust this path and reposition this path wherever you want. So for example, if I elongate this, the measurements there you can see are reacting to me resizing this. So I'll just resize that. Now, if you want to have the measurements on the screen, obviously you can see what the actual size is without having this window. Or if, if you print this off, you want them, maybe want this measurements displayed. If you search at the top there for measure, it will come up with these sort of tools. So you've got like, I'll just drag them on. That's that shape. You've got a vertical measure, which is that one. And then you just got the measuring tool, which you can readjust yourself, which is the one I'm going to use. Just delete these two off. So you can position this, I'll position it on this side. So it's, it gives you the measurement of this path. Now, if you don't want to do it like that, you can actually, because I've got the shape and size window up, you can actually type the length. It's in millimeters. You can just type meters if you want, five meters, um, which would be 5,000 millimeters. And then you just have that measurement there. You might want to put that on at the end when you've finished everything, just in case you haven't got enough space to have those displayed. And then to get rid of this, you just click the cross and you're back to your stencils. So I've got the, the, the concrete pathway. Now I want another one that going that way. Now I don't really need it to go the full length of the driveway. Now the garden itself has a fence around it. So you've got a wood fence so that you can start positioning. So the wood fence actually does go down all the way to the front. So if I come all the way that this way, and again, the measurements is up to you to put this on. Uh, you've got the measuring tool. I showed you how to get that, but the wood fence, I'll just spin this around so it has a fence coming down this way as well and then it comes all the way back to this area so you're just giving yourself a boundary and extending the the fence to the edge of the concrete if you can get it there so that's not straight you can see that's not straight so you you've got to either bring your, that up or this down so I'll bring this down to make it horizontal so just move it out of the way a little bit Make that one a bit longer. And then just make this level. And then I can extend it a little bit like so. And then maybe make that bit bigger. There is a gap. There is a gap between the path and the, and the fence anyhow. Okay, so your measurement would have to be readjusted. That's why I said you should probably put these on at the end when you've finished everything. 
So that's that bit. And now I want a patio. So in the um, garden accessory area, there should be a patio, there it is, that runs all the way on the inside of, from the fence all the way down to this fence. I'll just move that over because that measurement tool is in the way. I want the summer house, so now we need to go to a different stencil, furniture. So we've got um, different furniture there. So what do I want? I want a reclining chair, these lounge chairs, but I want to put a summer house there first. So let's do that. Let's get a shape. Let's go for this and let's sit that in the corner. That's where it is. So that has double set of doors on it. My summer house does, which I've just pulled down to be honest, like so. And then I can put two lounge chairs in there. And um, if I want to give that a title, I can do summer house, just double click on it. And then you go back to your garden accessories and get your chairs, uh, furniture, not garden accessories, lounge chairs, and you put them in there and spin them round if you need to, so they fit the other way. So the sun's coming in that way. And then just position those either side. In fact, I'll just copy that one across. So I'm gonna hold my control key down while I do that. I'll just make a copy of that so you don't have to spin two round. So you've got your two shapes, uh, you've got your summer house, and that's okay. Now I want a lawn. So garden, we're going for a lawn grass lawn there you go so this just sits there and then you position this or make this as big as you want it to be and like so you could um, if you're starting on a blank canvas in your garden obviously you can position these wherever you want I'm at that stage at the moment I've just demolished everything so I've got a blank space and I'm not going to go for a lawn. I'm probably going to pave the whole thing. But in the if I had it like this, I probably would want a space there for a path or maybe a bit of this, more of this patio. Um, if I can make that a bit narrower, so this patio could be it could be decking, which is what I've just taken up after twenty odd years. So I could have maybe a decking platform in front of there. So you're walking out of the summer house onto a decking platform and the measurements are there so you can just position that in wherever you want it to be just move it across a little bit and then you've got this space here which is um, probably would be another lawn to be honest if I put that in there so we're grassing the whole thing um, just make a tea piece for the lawn Up to the side of the shed that'll do just bang that down a little bit and then you've got a, a, a t-piece let's make it slightly smaller it's gone over the side of the um okay so it's snapping and i don't want it to snap that far so what i need to do now is look at this let's just try changing that down to 600 Okay, that one, that one, so that to two, two, seven millimeters. Let's go for two, six then. That's okay. that back up so you just have to mess around a little bit with these to get these to be the right side if you've got the proper measurements obviously you can just type them in so that's playing about with me so let's try putting eight hundred millimeters not eight thousand I'm not going to do any more this is the last adjustment 850 890 yeah that'll do could be there all day doing that but you get the right measurements and then you won't have that problem now you may notice um, I've got the shape data window open and 
I'm now clicked on the page, so I'm not on a shape. So that's the grass. There's no shape data for the grass. Summer house. There is a bit of shape data for that. The chairs. Um, asset, asset register really for the chairs. But if you click on the page, it's just giving you all these sort of stuff like the fence, the width. You can change the width of the fence if I put that to 125. And if I put it to something weird like 300 millimeters. Obviously, that's too too fat, but you can actually adjust this, and you've got different sizes of panels and stuff like that. So that's quite a useful little feature to know about. Rather than clicking on every single thing individually, you can get quite a lot of it there. Not everything. Um, now, if you bring something on the screen that isn't editable or you, like this, so I've brought a post on. So I want to make that post a bit thicker than that. So I want it to be 200 millimeters. What I'm going to get here is, is this coming up saying shape protect. You can't do it basically. So it's saying you've got layer properties preventing you doing that, or it's in a container or it's on shape protection. So then you go, well, let's have a look at containers. Um, so we want to go back to insert container. There's no container. These are all there, but if, if that was a container, it would have the container tab at the top and it isn't. So then it got up, it went on about layers. So got layers, layer properties. So this is all of it. So what all you want is the post. You've got the fence there, walls. So there's no, there's no layers there. So that's not got a layer. So just cancel that. But protection is what it is. If I go to the developer tab, and if you haven't got the developer tab on, you need to go to file options. And in there, you just tick developer. And then all these all these features will be, will be available. So on, under developer, you've got protection. And when you click on protection, you can see that these three things are ticked. So if you take them off, okay, it will allow you then to change that if you so wished to be bigger. Like so. Now I didn't want. I don't want that post at all. So I'm just going to delete that. But I just. I just wanted to show you that if you bring a shape on any shape in any stencil that seems to be locked and you can't adjust it and you want to adjust it, this is probably where it is. The 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 protection tab there. See, there's no protection on that, so you can adjust that as we have done. We have adjusted that. Now I want to bring a, a the, the the external wall of the house onto this. So we've got a. Um, walls and structures and we've got external wall here so I'll just spin that round and stick it in the corner there just to give it some external wall and the same thing we're going down this side here external wall goes down there goes a lot further than that but that'll do and in that you have a door just there and you have a window, window probably sitting about there. And then this space is just a space. So you've got spaces there and you can just position this to wherever it needs to go. And then elongate it to the bottom and then just move it across if you want. And then rename that. Um, if I just edit text, so you can type at the bottom there. I'm just going to put kitchen there. So this is going to be the kitchen and then just zoom that back down again. And then what you've got now is most of your floor plan done. Obviously you need to, or well, you don't need to, you could move this across to the fence. And I should have done that when I built mine because that gap there became just full of trees that decided to grow. Um, we're constantly getting cut down and down the back as well was also a problem because this was all soil in my garden and all sorts of trees sit here and they were dropping their seeds and plant and they were growing there so if I did this again I would push that right to the fence and right back into the court right into the corner basically and then that would stop that happening and that's all I want to talk about on this one basically how to do a little garden plan simple nothing too technical about that hopefully you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one